Welcome to the first edition of Behind the Helmet, where we're joined by Indy Lights driver Stingray Rob throughout the 2022 season as he pursues a championship in the series. I'm your host, David Hoffman, and alongside me is the driver of the number two for Andretti Autosport, Stingray Rob. Stingray, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, David. How are you? I'm doing great. So obviously, um, you know, you've been on the show a couple of times before, uh, you know, so going into this first ever edition of Behind the Helmet, uh, you know, St. Petersburg, you wound up fourth. There's a little bit of a craziness with your teammates, uh, Hunter, Mac- Hunter, Hunter McElray and Kristen Rasmussen. They both had issues while they were leading. You ended up gaining a couple spots. So go and take us through that first week of the season. Well, obviously getting back to racing with Andretti Auto Sports, awesome. Um, that team, I don't know how I can describe how well that they've put together a program. I mean, just to be able to be associated with the name like Andretti is a blessing. So, uh, so far this year, we've had some good time in the seat and testing during off season, get ready for that first race at St. Pete, but, um, rolling into St. Pete, I thought we had the car to beat. Um, obviously we had a good setup, uh, with Hunter qualifying first and myself qualifying third. And then on that race start, I don't know what got into me. I just got a little too excited, you know, a typical adrenaline rush. And we had the day off on Saturday in between the Friday qualifying and Sunday race. So, um, you know, going to turn one, got in a little deep, pushed the Linus and I wide, and then ended up falling back down to sixth um, until Hunter uh, had the first yellow flag of the race after he hit the wall. So unfortunate for him leading the race and then having contact there, ending his day early, but promoted me to fifth. And then obviously Christian, uh, he did a great job getting ahead after the restart. And I don't know. I don't know what to say, man. There's just no words to describe how much pain that he could have gone through in those last couple laps, realizing they ran out of fuel. Um, and it's not something that happens, right? Like obviously with the, the longer race format, um, we're learning a few things with the lights car, but um, it's one of those days that you wish would never come, but I was thankful to gain an extra spot finishing fourth. So that's good points for the day. And Matt Brabham coming away with the win. I mean, that was, that was pretty cool to see. He's kind of like the old guy in our group. We like to make fun of him for it, but good to see him come back and do well. You mentioned that first corner. I know I was watching in the media center. I was like, wait, what, what's going on here? You know, yeah. <laughs> so it was a bit basically adrenaline. I know going into turn one, especially that with the, I guess with like the paint on the, um, on like the, the strip, the, uh, like yeah. the airstrip, is that like kind of play into that or was it just more adrenaline yeah, as well honestly i think that was the main issue is like if i were to have broken that same spot on the regular driving line i would have been fine but um a little bit cooler tires um had too much understeer and so when i hit that white paint line then my left side locked up and so i just couldn't turn into the turn um so it just it's one of those things where if i broke 10 feet sooner i might have made the, the corner but i didn't so therefore falling back but it's it's frustrating on a weekend like that with the single header races you don't have that chance to redeem yourself like you would on other race weekends which i guess is more similar to indycar now and that's the whole goal behind it right so that we can get a feel for what those indycar weekends will be like when we step up and uh you know obviously you mentioned with uh your one of your teammates christian uh he had uh you know ran out of fuel on the final lap was fuel ever an issue from your you know vantage point or is it just kind of like that random no. little thing you're like whoa I think that there was maybe some issue there, some mechanical issue that could have happened that caused him to to burn more fuel during the race than the rest of us. Um, Maybe a small leak. I'm I'm not sure. I haven't heard anything, any info on that yet. So I think it was just one of those freak accidents that sometimes happens in racing. So kind of got to just take your losses and move on to the next one in that case. And obviously you mentioned your teammate, Matthew Brabham won his first Indy lights race in nine years, something like that. Uh, <laughs> what does a guy like him bring to the table and just, you know, just into the room every single week? You know, I think we have a good group of guys first off. I mean, between the four of us, I think that any one of us could have a run at the championship. Um, that's excluding all the HMD drivers that could also be right up there as well. not to say that some, someone else might not do that, but uh, it just seems like, we have a really, really strong group of drivers that have a lot of experience, a lot of talent. Um, Hunter is probably the, the one that I least expected to perform as well as he is this season, um, just because he doesn't have that championship um, staple as Christian and Matt do. But um, each one of those three guys, I think, are beyond what I expected. And then Matt just brings so much more of that experience level to the table. Um, he may not be the quickest guy on every day, but he's consistent. 
and he's going to, he's going to make it happen one way or another. Like he, he's one of those guys that really understands the engineering side. He understands the um, little nuances here or there. Like one of the things that we, we were messing with throughout the weekend was with that day off on Saturday, we were guessing what the track was going to be like on Sunday. And I think Matt did a good job of predicting that. Um, we, we all did. Uh, I may have underest- underestimated it a little bit, um, but it's just one of those things where like all that experience and knowledge kind of comes to the forefront when you get to, to racing. So I think as the, the year continues, Matt will be one of those guys that stays up the front, but it's cool to see him come back and, you know, share that knowledge, share that experience with us. You mentioned just the competitive side of just the entire series itself. How do, how does that help you kind of go into each and every week knowing that you're going to have to bring your A game every single week with it being so stacked yeah. from top to bottom? Yeah, uh, man. You know, I said it in an interview earlier this year, but it's you got to win the day. Winning the day is the key. So um, that's my goal for this year is just to win the day that I'm in. I can't focus too far down the road. So I got to keep the faith, stay strong, and – keep working when I can. And those, those one lap races, you know, it's just little things here and there that's going to pay off in the end. And overall, how would you assess the first week of the season? Obviously, you know, finishing fourth, it's a really great start to the season, both, you know, on the track and then the points wise as well. I think it was an okay weekend. Um, I'd like to say it was good, but I know it could have been a lot better. You know, had I left turn one in second place, that would have promoted me to first and we probably would have stayed there. Um, I think we had a car to stay out front. It was a little bit harder to follow, uh, especially around St. Pete, tight corners, narrow track. Um, and that arrow wash from the cars in front, just is brutal. Um, so I think if we were to have been out in the lead, we would have stayed there pretty well. But uh, going forward for the rest of the, the year, I think that we learned a lot just from the first weekend. Obviously, we got a lot of testing going on. Um, and so we've learned a lot in those times, uh, just trying to figure out what the tracks are going to be like, guessing what, where can we improve? Where are those biggest gains that we can make? And, you know, obviously last year was kind of a, a crazy year, you know, with only two drivers really dominating the series um, and on two different teams too. And I think that both teams Andretti and HMD have looked to improve during this off season in both their weak areas. And uh, I'm going to play my cards the way that I'm leaning, obviously, because I'm with Andretti, but I think Andretti's done the most, development during the off season. And so I'm excited to see how that plays out throughout the rest of the year. And obviously, you know, you have all over a month, you have until May till Barber, <laughs> what are you going to do yeah. until then? Like, is it just, do you have any testing kind of lined up or is this chilling out for the most part? So we do have a couple days in the car still before Barber, thankfully. I mean, that's, that's a long time out of the seat. So having a couple days just to knock the rust off a little bit and stay fit is good. Uh, but in the meantime, it's just going to be, uh, working out, getting ready. Cause Barbara is a super physical track. So I'm going to try and make myself not have a bobblehead for the race weekend. Um, it seems like that 13, 14 section up the hill there <clears throat> always kills me. And it feels like your head is just like not even attached to your body, just all over the place. So I'm going to be working hard to get my, my head on straight, getting physically fit. And obviously like the team's working hard to see what they can do set up wise. I mean, there, I'm really happy with my engineer, Ron Barhorst. Uh, he's a former IndyCar assistant engineer. So he's got a lot of knowledge and he's really good at looking into data and seeing what he can learn from that. Um, so I'm sure he'll come up with a, a few tricks here or there. And then I'm also doing real estate. So I got my real estate license recently. So I'm going to be working with my uncle at home um, when I'm not too busy focused on the racing. So it's just like a little side hobby. I can put a couple of dollars in my pocket and move on. And that could be that could be a little bit of money. That could also be a lot of money, <laughs> depending. It on, could, you know, yeah. Yeah, and the Boise, Idaho market's pretty pretty booming right now. So it's nice to be here and have a good mentor in my uncle. That will be a lot of fun. We'll have to follow that throughout the season. Uh, and obviously, <laughs> on the IndyCar side of things, Scott McLaughlin won the race, first ever win. Were you able to watch the race, and what were your thoughts on you know the win? Yeah, so I was actually in pit lane for part of the race before I got too sunburnt, and then I had to yeah. head back to the, <clears throat> excuse me, head back to the shade. But I think that guy, he's so talented. Scott is like one of those guys that I think we may have underestimated, but I know that the guys in on the inside in IndyCar are all like, yeah, that's a dude. That's one of those guys. He's a staple of the series now. So I think it'll be fun to watch him throughout the year. I know that Penske's always been good at St. Pete. 
Um, seems like they always got a card in the front. Obviously, Will Power was right there with them too, just a little bit off. So um, I'm curious. I think it'll be a fun season for IndyCar. Uh, Colton Herta did well too with Andretti. So I think it's just going to be fun to watch. There's a lot of really, really talented drivers in the field right now. And Scotty came out on top last weekend. And you mentioned, um, you know, with, uh, with the heat and getting sunburned, oh my gosh, what, what was the heat? I mean, I'm not used to that heat and like, cause I went in there, I was used to 30, 40 degree weather in Pennsylvania. Oh, me too. And then it's just like, you go in and I didn't expect it to be that bad. And it's like, I'm burning up. I, I had to sit in the media center 90% of the race. Cause I was just spent. Yeah, no, it's even worse than the car, right? Like, especially for the Indy car guys with the new aero screen, there's no airflow, at least in Indy lights. We have the halo. So we have a little bit of airflow, but after an hour long session in the car, you are just sweating. And that, that was one of the things I think that may have affected some of the, the, accidents in our race it's just like that heat you get brain fade a little bit if you're not i mean obviously first race of the year everyone's still trying to get in shape and see what it's going to be like and you know first race with 85 plus degree weather bright sun humidity uh sticky track just adds up really fast so yeah it was an interesting weekend for that definitely warmer than the 30 degree idaho weather with the snow and you know frost in the morning and everything else but not in florida Wait, so you guys still getting snow or what's the kind of the weather pattern with winter going into springtime? So right now it's actually, I'm looking outside, but it's, it's sunny and probably 50 degrees. Um, but I went skiing a couple of days ago in the mountains. So we we're lucky enough that we have really big elevation changes. So you can go to the mountains, enjoy the snow, enjoy the winter weather, come back, get some spring weather. Um, but later this week, it's looking like we might get some snow. Uh, so we'll see. It just kind of depends on the year, but uh, it seems very similar to Indianapolis. Indianapolis is like on the same temperature pattern that we are here. And I don't know what that deal is, but I don't mind. I mean, it's nice having a place in Indy and Idaho where it's kind of the same, same temperature. So it doesn't feel too different when I travel around. That's true. And it kind of helps us then doesn't like throw off like your, whether it's just like your senses or like your uh, yeah. like your nostrils or whatever else kind of like yeah with the cold type of thing but yeah that was one thing in florida too is like that hot weather i don't know what it is about florida but it hates me like my allergies were so bad while we were there so it's like okay i'll go back to the cold there's no allergies right now it's not springtime yet so it was fine you mentioned allergies have you ever sneezed in a race car i've wondered this <laughs> like any type of driver i'm definitely I don't know if I've actually ever sneezed, but I've definitely felt the urge to sneeze. It's just sketchy when you want to close your eyes in the middle of a straightaway and like jerk the wheel. And it's not, not the best idea. Um, but typically when you're in the car, everything kind of goes out the window and it's fight or flight mode. Hmm. That does make sense. Thankfully that hasn't happened yet. I know Rossi, I think <laughs> he said at one time that he did actually, <laughs> especially yeah. down the IMS speedway, you know, down the front stretch, that'd be sketchy. I don't know. But moving on to our second, uh, more fun area of our first ever episode of Behind the Helmet. Uh, now, we're going to be basically going through a couple random questions. I have this random question generator I found the other day. And I'm like, let's try this. So I'm going to get my phone out over here. And we're going to answer three questions that I have no clue what they're going to be. All right. Let's see if my face right. ID will work here. All right. Now, what board game do you like the most? Oh, I like board games a lot, actually. So like during COVID, that was one of the things that was like keeping me sane is that I go over to my my sister's house, my nieces and my nephews, and we just play board games. Um, so a new one that I've learned is Secret Hitler. And it's, oh my gosh, I can't even describe it. It's like, uh, there's another game that's like it, but you have to like figure out who Hitler is and try and stop them. So there's like a liberal team and then there's like the fascist team. So like as a fascist, you're trying to like vote Hitler into power, but there's like only so many power plays you can make. And you're like, no one knows who the other person is. So you have to guess and figure it out. So it's fun because it usually turns like a yelling match and everyone's just like, you're a fascist, you're a fascist. And they're really not. They're two liberals going at it. So it makes it interesting, but I like reading people. And so it's kind of like poker where you have to like read what the other person's playing, but there's no, no, like, uh, I don't know. It's more fun because there's more interaction. Versus just like counting cards in your head. I've never heard of that before. I, I'm going to have to look that up oh, now. It, so seems like, it seems like it could really uh, tear apart some friendships <laughs> during the game. Oh, yeah. 
Oh yeah, no, it's fun. I went to a, a it was called Passion City Conference um, in the beginning of the year. And we stayed up to like two, three in the morning with the group playing Secret Hitler. And it was just so much fun. So I'd recommend it. I'll have to look that up. I'd say, oh gosh, for me, I'm kind of more simple. I I just played Sorry for the first time last summer. So I didn't oh really goodness. have that before then. <laughs> so can't really say that. Um, so honestly, I was kind of grew up on, well, I, I was terrible at checkers also. So I can't play that not let alone chess so probably life i just feel like it's kind of like a classic type of you yeah. know not don't have to think too much but it's like you're able to you know just enjoy it and you think about life per se <laughs> yeah have you ever heard of a uh, redneck life wait that's a thing yeah so th- it's like life but the way that you win is you have the most teeth left over at the end that's- so the goal is to keep your teeth i'm like oh that's all right i like it just, I'm like, look that up too. My goodness, you're going to start taking money out of my pocket <laughs> for board games. <laughs> yeah. that, that's interesting. I'll look that up then. All right, let's see. Our second question. If you get rid... Oh, wait, no. Nah. Your favorite day of the week is... Oof. Sunday, probably, because it's either race day or church. Yeah. One of the two. Just to be different, those are both perfect answers. Uh, just to be different, I'll say <laughs> Friday, just because, especially in high school, like when you knew, all right, as soon as this oh, bell yeah. hits like 2.36 or something like that, I get to finally be free. I don't have to think about homework the rest of the day, <laughs> you know, whole three days or something like that. So I'd say that just to be you know different on that aspect. Yeah, I like it. And our final one. Hmm, let's see. Um, there's a lot of random ones. What time do you normally go to bed? Oof. Uh, <laughs> later than I should. Um, on a race day, I, I really like to be in bed by 9.30. It's one of those things where you're mentally exhausted. Physically, you're feeling all right. But it's nice to get like that nine hour plus sleep range. Uh, but on a typical day, I probably go to bed at like 10.30, 11. Maybe later some nights, depending on the day. <laughs> I have this unfortunate thing where, I don't know, especially with college, I started getting into a thing where even if I had like an 815 class where I had to wake up at like seven or something, I would still go to bed at two, three a.m. Just oh, because wow. I, I just was, ex- I don't know, I just felt like that's the most quiet time that I ever had. And it was kind of like, all right, you know, I'm just going to watch a random race or, you know, search just like, you know, a random thing I didn't know about before, you know, just my brain would just start really reeling at that time. I don't know why, but, That's fine. but during St. Pete, I think, oh, flying through to St. Pete, I think I had like the night before when we were on the plane getting to St. Pete, I had two hours of sleep in total the night before. So I'm just kind of on the plane, oh just staring out the window, like, am I going to make it through the weekend? But thankfully, <laughs> another five hours That's of sleep good. to add on to that. And a couple hours later, you're good. But <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, no, not me. I need my sleep. Every day. I need it right now. I'll have to go to bed here soon so then I can actually feel a little bit more alive. (laughs) But yeah, that's all all the time that we have today. So look out for the next episode of Behind the Helmet. Almost a catch fence. Says on the shirt. But look out for the next episode of Behind the Helmet. So come after Barber in May. I appreciate you guys tuning in. We both do. And uh, you can follow the podcast on Twitter and Instagram at Behind Catch. And where can we follow you, Stingray? I'm on all the social medias at Stingray Rob. Uh, Twitter, I think, is at Sting underscore Ray underscore Rob. So uh, follow me on all those and you can keep on on track with me and check out what I'm doing for the offseason right now in between the next race. Perfect. And uh, thank you guys for tuning in and uh, we'll see you here in a couple of weeks.